So here's the situation. You're making a painting, happily mixing a color on your palette. You pick it up, lay it down on the canvas, but then you realize that there is a problem. It's way too vivid. Okay, so you need to gray down, desaturate it if you want. So what you would do is pick up some black and white to create gray. But then all of a sudden, this color that you liked before turns out dull, dirty and ash-like. It lost all the vitality that you wanted. It needed to be less saturated, sure, but now it's not even that. It has a completely different tonality. The gray has totally ruined the initial color. Does it sound familiar? If it is, then worry no more. I'm going to present to you a really interesting and strangely underrated or I don't know, maybe not underrated, but overlooked technique to balance cutters. We're going to see how to desaturate cutters without losing their qualities by using complementary cutters in a very specific way. And make sure to stay until the end because I'm gonna share with you one of my most valuable mixing tips that I use in most of my work. So this painting technique is centered around a strategic use of complementary cutters. So it might be a good idea to explain first what complementary cutters actually do before we know how to use them to our advantage in this strategy. Two cutters are complementary if they are diametrically opposed in the cutter wheel. As a side note, you need to have the right cutter wheel for this to work. This cutter wheel with red, blue and yellow as primaries, well, doesn't work. And you can download my adjusted cutter wheel system if you're interested, it's in the links below. So back to the theory, I'm not gonna bore you with all the details, but just know that complementary cutters are antagonistic. This means that one is composed of all the nuances of the spectrum that are missing from the other. Look at this example. Here are two complementary cutters, cadmium red and cobalt teal blue with a graph showing their spectral reflectance. And as you can see, cadmium red covers most of the wavelength that turquoise blue, the cobalt teal, doesn't cover and inversely. So if someone tells you that red is complementary to green, it's probably because they use an incorrect cutter wheel and I encourage you to just direct them to my website. Complementary cutters exist because of how our vision works and they can be determined by the phenomenon of retinal persistence. Here is how it works. I'm going to display a set of squares on a white background and ask you to stare at the dot in the middle for 20 seconds approximately. When I'm going to remove the squares, I really need you to keep your eyes on the, the white background, like really keep your eyes steady. If you want, you can let them blur out, but really keep your eyes centered. All right, so now you should see all the complementary cutters inverted. So this is how we define the visual complementary cutters. In case you were wondering, it's not an effect of screens. You can do the same experiment with paint on a white surface. You can try it. We have to focus on our painting strategy in this video so we don't have the time to dig deeper. And believe me, it does go deeper. But if you're interested, you can check out my color course in the description. So when we do all the retinal persistence, the complementary pairs that we have are red and cyan, yellow and blue, and magenta and green. Keep them in mind because they are going to be crucial to our painting strategy later on. All right, final thing to know about complementary colors before we can move on to our painting technique. Really important effect, mixing two complementary colors gives a neutral gray. Look at what happens when you add the spectrum of cadmium red and cobalt teal blue together. The result is an almost entirely straight line. It means that this color is composed of the same proportion of all the shades, all the hues. It's neither red nor yellow nor blue nor green. It's a neutral gray. I think you're starting to understand how our painting strategy is going to work. With the power of complementary cutters, we can avoid creating boring grays with white and black. And even more than that, we can lighten and darken cutters without using white or black. In fact, this technique is so powerful that I personally almost never use ivory black or Mars black in my palette. I have it, but I almost never use it. 
As many of you already maybe know, I mostly use a mix of ultramarine, blue and burnt umbra to create black. And guess what they are? That's right, they are complementary cutters. Complementary cutters can replace black and white. So here it is, our palette strategy. And you can see that my go-to palette, the one that I often recommend on this channel, is built around strong complementary pairs. To be fair, my palette is designed to be varied and balanced and have pigments from all around the wheel. But when you do that, then you get colors opposite each other in the wheel, so complementary. And more importantly, the colors don't really need to match perfectly for this effect to work. If they are more or less complementary, more or less on the opposite side, they can do a lot of useful things when they are mixed. So the complementary pairs on my palette are the following. Cadmium or Pyrrole Red is complementary to Cobalt Teal or Phthalo Turquoise. Ultramarine Blue is complementary to Yellow Ochre or Transparent Red Oxide and also to Burnt Umber. Crinacridon Magenta is complementary to Phthalo Green Yellow Shade. For example, Let's say that we want to paint a green for some type of foliage with this phthalo green here. It's a very strong cutter, so you might think that it's excessive as a pigment, but we can use crinacridone magenta, crinacridone rose, whatever, to grade down because those cutters are complementary. See, if you mix them with white, you get a neutral gray. Or you can go the other way around. Let's say you mix a cutter for the lips on a portrait, but you get something too pink and too chromatic, then simply add a touch of green to neutralize it. That's easy, right? But so often overlooked, because not everybody is clear on what complementary cutters are and what the right pairs are. And the right pairs are mostly those that work. If your mix is too orange, add a touch of blue. If your blue is more on the purple side. If a mix is too red, add a touch of cyan, etc. It always works. Forget about black and white. Forget about gray. Try using complementaries first. It brings so much more variety and complexity. Much better than creating a boring gray that kills the color. And if it doesn't work, gray is still a great option, but you'll see that if you have the right pairs in mind, if you know color mixing well, you'll rarely need it. The great thing about this technique is that it's not limited to palette mixing. It can be applied spontaneously and dynamically on the canvas as well. While the paint is still wet, you can incorporate complementary colors to create vibrant effects. If you have a red area that's too red and too flat, you can desaturate it with a cyan like this one and it can be blended or it can be left visible depending on the effect that you want to achieve. Blending it into the wet paint is almost like backtracking on your previous palette mixing. If you're not happy with the colors that you painted, you can modify it directly on the canvas and let the brush do the mixing. The other approach is to keep the colors separated. This way you create a strong optical effect that the viewers might not actually see in the first place because it's optically blended. Remember the entire retinal persistence thing that we saw and how our eyes are designed so that when we see one color, its complementary is activated at the same time in the background. And this effect is very powerful and it was used a lot by an artist like Seurat, for example. I really don't like his paintings, just a matter of reference and taste, I guess, but he definitely used uh, optical mixing a lot with separated colors next to each other that create a unique color when you get further away from the painting. And you would be surprised how many people wouldn't notice a touch of green, a touch of blue or cyan right in the middle of a face, if it's done obviously with subtlety, if it's just slightly blended. But the effect of complementary colors is so strong that even that, like a touch of blue in the middle of a face is not necessarily going to be noticed. And try it, it's very fun and very powerful. So time for my secret, which is not really a secret anymore because I talk about it so much on this channel, my most valuable strategy for the colors of the human figure. 
it involves green, it involves blue, and it involves cyan. And I use them a lot in portraits, in figures, for most human colors, actually. Now, I'm sure that you understand why green is complementary to magenta, blue is complementary to yellow-orange, and cyan is complementary to red. And all this, magenta, yellow, orange, and red, are the hues that are naturally present in the skin by default. And as complementaries, green, blue, and cyan, naturally harmonize and neutralize without making the cutters look too dull and too muddy, if it's done well, obviously, if it's done with subtlety. For example, I need to balance or harmonize a skin that looks too rose, too pinkish, then I can just add a touch of green. That's kind of easy. When the skin looks too yellow-orange, brick-like, when it feels, you know, too mineral and clay-like, I can use a touch of ultramarine blue because it's a complementary to this yellow-orange. Actually, just know that the ideal complementary to oppose to a yellow ochre, for example, would be ultramarine violet or ultramarine blue purple shade. But I don't know, I find that ultramarine blue, like the regular one, is more useful. So if needed, I'll just add a touch of magenta to pull this ultramarine blue, which is more on the blue side, more towards the purple side. And that's that easy. Navigate the cutter wheel with the right pigments. And it can also work the other way around. If you create shadows that are too dark, you can lighten the area with yellow instead of white. And obviously, to prevent the yellow from looking yellow and dominating, you can gray it down with a touch of ultramarine blue and quinacridone rose if needed. This way, you don't have to use white, which can make colors look chalky when it's too dominant. And you know, it goes like this, when the skin cutter looks too red, you can simply add a touch of cyan turquoise to balance it, and it can be done with blending or with optical blending. Uh, with a light cutter like cobalt teal, it can also be used to lighten like the yellow without using white. And it's much more vibrant and lively to use complementary cutters and sad that too many beginners overlook this technique because uh, frankly, I think they're not really certain that they understand the effects of complementary cutters. Well, now you know and you can explain to them. Black and white work fine, but if you can avoid it, your paintings will have a lot more complexity and will simply feel more vibrant and exciting. Cutter is complicated and maybe you're not there yet, so if you want to practice with a painting exercise that reduces color to the minimum, you can click here next somewhere that's going to appear. A huge thank you to all my Patreon members, this video wouldn't be possible without your support. And if you want to join the community, you'll find a link in the description below. You'll also find the links to both my courses, my oil painting course and my cutter course. Alright, that's it for today. As always, my friends, joy and inspiration to you. Bye.